I'm involved at the moment with a, a postdoc researcher called Johannes Lotz, uh, who was here as a, he did his PhD at the University of Manchester. We have been working on an exhibition which will open on the 21st of October. And the title of the exhibition will be uh, Qing, China's Multilingual Empire. Here in 1901, uh, Mrs. Ryland purchased a large collection, a very varied collection of manuscripts from the 25th Earl of Crawford. So he had amassed a huge library, not far from here at Hay Hall, uh, near Wigan. The, the, the Crawford were a Scottish aristocratic family, but they also had estates uh, in the northwest of England. And they were lucky enough to find coal on their estates around Wigan, so they uh, made quite a bit of money out of that. And the uh, 25th Earl decided to uh, spend that on uh, building a, quite a substantial library of print uh, and also manuscript and quite a broad collection, so not just uh, European manuscripts and, and printed books, but he was also interested in a, a global civilization. Um, the Earl of Crawford was collecting from about the early 1860s onwards. He didn't himself travel very much, but he used agents, and um, particularly for the East Asian collections he had agents in Japan and China who were sending uh, items back for him. Uh, but in collaboration with the John Rylands Research Institute, we're now the John Rylands Research Institute and Library, uh, we worked in partnership with the Beijing Normal University. They sent a number of researchers over in 2013, 2014, and they produced a new catalogue. So there's, there's two volumes here. So the first one here, will be the, the first item that visitors will see when they come uh, to the exhibition. And it, uh, it really stands as an introduction to the collections and also to the themes of the, the exhibition. And this is the, uh, a printed version of the birthday scroll for the Emperor Changxi, who, uh, his 60th birthday, I think, in 1716, and so this was, was printed uh, as a sort of memorial of the, the birthday celebrations, printed as a record of the procession through the streets of, of Beijing. The whole thing has been digitised. Uh, all of this scroll will also be on a digital interactive screen in the exhibition space. There's one researcher who claims that this, this scroll and other copies of this scroll have the first depiction of tobacco smoking in Chinese history. There's a tobacco shop somewhere along the street, and then you can see figures who are very clearly smoking tobacco from those old style long pipes. So we uh, have included this in, in the exhibition um, to, to look at the, the, the different ethnic groups that were part of the Qing Empire, and especially in the 18th century was a period of great expansion. So this is an, an object, it's quite a lovely thing as well. So the two, two volumes have these wooden covers and they come in um, a silk uh, case as well, uh, a, a sort of pocket case. And these became very popular in the 18th century and they go into the, the generic term now of um, uh, album of the Mao people. And it, they were popular genre for uh, court officials to have commissioned, to, to have in their collection as a sort of representative of um, the, the peoples that had become part of the Chinese Empire in the, the southwest provinces, which were, uh, and who were given this generic term of, of Miao, even though there, there were, uh, I think, originally a group of people under that name, but not all of those who are represented in these albums are necessarily um, from the same ethnic groups.